the city. What is this place? That's a good question. It doesn't appear to be hotter than the volcano place. So this is a break out of the established pattern. So far it looks destroyed. Also it's totally gray and it also looks just dead. Look at the parched earth. It's all cracked. It's totally different from anything you've seen. Maybe this is where the guns came from? They were made by these people? Oh, I see a city in the background. It what is, is this? Majestic and magnificent, but everything looks dead. Looks like a an abandoned city. What is this color? Those machines. They are dead, but they move. This color is life? It's... Oh, am I gonna... I'm gonna get to connect power sources to machines. Oh, that is gonna be awesome. I love doing that. I still remember playing with redstone in Minecraft. I think that was my favorite part out of all of Minecraft was playing with redstone. Right, can't get rid of it, so I just need to jump over it. You thought you were complete, but there are still some things that you don't understand. Well, yeah, I mean, Jesus, I didn't think I was totally complete. I've, I've been alive for like three hours. I, I think I still have a couple things to learn about life, and the world, or worlds. This place is scarier than the volcano, and it feels colder than the frozen mountains. A place I was once alive. A ghost town. Oh my. This doesn't look safe, but they're not connected to any power source, so it's fine. Who would create you such feel a thing? like an intruder, like in the beginning of your journey. Who would create such a thing? What is this for? Is this some incredibly overblown security measure? But if so, in response to what? Did they wage war against something? And lost? Maybe that's maybe that's what those weapons were for. They're part of the war effort. Maybe learning this color will help you to understand the secret of this place. A spark. Pure energy. Life maker. Death bringer. The city is not a natural place. And its veins are filled with... Electricity. Yellow. Thunder. Spark. Electricity. Okay, that's kind of creepy looking. It looks like some horrible clown <laughs> with its red smile. Plus, a red smile has another connotation to it. 
So that's just kind of disturbing. Let's let's not do that. There we go. Oh, look, you can see. You can see the electricity spark up when you put it down. Look at that. It's so pretty. Loop de loop de loop. Rip. <laughs> That's an interesting pathway that it chose for itself. Hold on, hold on. Does it actually follow the exact pathway that you set out? Like, if you did like this. Um, not quite, game. Close. Uh, I, I don't think you're calculating that quite right, game. Hold on, one more try. Maybe they just need to be separated more. Let's, uh, let's just separate it more. Let's try that. Okay, there you go. Right, um, there. Is that is that good? Good game. Okay, I think the I think the pathfinding on the electricity is a little bit uh, finicky, but for some reason I really enjoyed messing with it. I'm just thinking, how is the game going to respond to this? I'm just, I guess I'm trying to break the game, and for some reason it's really fun. It's always fun to break games, isn't it? It brings life. Artificial life. <laughs> Going for the least efficient pathway here. Meandering little thing. There we go. Let's, um... Oh, it's gonna go up and down. Okay. What will that do? Wait, but why is the snail inside of there? Does it have anything to do with anything? Oh, I thought it was gonna do something with it. Never mind. You've learned more about this city and its machines. They were created by someone. But it wasn't the Void. It's nice to see something created by something other than the Void, although it is unfortunately... dead. Let's see, if I turn this off, will it stay up there? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Okay. God, those things are loud. Really loud. We're starting to understand. There we go. Hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. I can't jump on the last one. Now you are starting to understand. And this one needs to be all the way up. Actually, that might be too high. That's too low. All right, that'll have to be good enough. Hmm. Right. So this needs to be slightly higher. 
This, I can make this slightly higher or this slightly lower. Let's make this slightly lower, safer. All right, see if... There we go. This place is not natural. It was built, built by someone. Someone has lived on this earth before you did. There we go. Good old bounce. In fact, I think I'm going to bounce just for the fun of it. Oh, my bouncing is over. Uh oh, I think we have a crate puzzle. It's raining like crazy outside. It's one hell. Whoa. It's one hell of a storm. It looks like the freaking world is ending. It's like 100 mile per hour rain. Alright, how far does that go up? Alright. So, what do I need the crates for? See what's over here. Okay, so I have three crates and I need to get them to three different spots, right? There's one over here to the left. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks so adorable. There's a blob. Uh. All right, let's get this one up. All right. And there's one. Ooh, can I push two crates? Yes, I can. Right there. And that should do it. Actually, now they're pushed to... Shit. They're pushed together. That's not going to work. In fact, that ruins both. Because of my unfortunate lack of ability to pull stuff. Well, let's try that again. Alright, let's do these separately. Keep them nice and separate so that never happens again. Keep that one on the right. And we'll put the other one on the far left. Actually, I might have been able to separate them but just by lifting these up differently. To separate them. Could I have done that? I'm not sure. Maybe. It doesn't really matter. What's done is done. And other tautologies. Such an inane thing to say, isn't it? What's done is done. Before everyone left, or before it was built? Uh, 
Ah, I have to trigger the gun before I can trigger the platform. Let's uh, swing wide here. I think it's going to shoot up. Yeah, okay. Well, this is going to be tricky. <laughs> as I, I say, as I slam my head right into it. If someone built this place, how was it before? There we go. This... Can't I just avoid them? Like this? Yeah, that's easy enough. Can I be crushed by this thing? Oh, no, you... Oh, wow. I didn't know you could do that. Whatever it was, it's been destroyed to build this. Oh, yeah, so he did mean from before it was built. What was it like before it was built? Destroyed? Well, I guess. Sort of. I mean, it's been changed, obviously, from what it was before. Whether you would call changing an environment destruction... I don't know. Someone lived here before you, and they destroyed the world as well. See, so this one isn't my fault. So that's something. Why should you feel any remorse then? You are sure now. You must live no matter how. Something has smashed these walls and floors. Something with a terrible strength. Um, have they? Because actually I'm looking at the background and I don't really see any damage. I mean, my immediate environment looks totally destroyed, but the background actually looks like... I mean, it looks okay. It looks like people just packed up and left. It doesn't look like artillery has barraged the entire town. Is barraged even a word? I don't even know if it is. It just after it smashes. I guess that was my time. Here you go, have something to smash. Okay, great, bye. Well, that actually worked. What the, the hell? Is the most perfect creature created by the Void. It is immortal, a perpetual watcher, a relentless keeper. I see. And I'm not the only one that sees, it sees too. Holy crap, that thing is creepy. Okay, what does it do? It's looking at me. Don't look at me. What do you what do you do? Oh my god, that is really creepy the way it follows me. Look at that. Can I touch it? <laughs> so that's what it does. Something has smashed these walls and floors. Something with a terrible strength. You can pass through it just after it smashes. Oh wait, did it not mean the entire town has been destroyed by this smashy thing? Does it just mean this, like, just right here? I, I don't know, is, is it implying that these creatures are responsible for what happened? Or does it just mean, you know, there's been some smashes here, so be careful? I'm not sure if it's talking about the whole town or just this situation right here. The Custodus is the most perfect creature created by the Void. It is immortal, a perpetual watcher, a relentless keeper. What if I did that? Wow, apparently, yeah, they are immortal, I guess. Well, I mean, this one's immortal, but is this one too? Well, apparently it is, because they can't be burned. It is really aggressive. 
though it surely can be distracted. Hmm. What distracts it? One of these things smashing? Maybe? Could I just jump over it? How do I even do this? Can I even get down there without being killed? That thing looks like it's ready to strike. Um, hmm. Could I get down here with that? Ah! That actually worked. But how do I get past that one? Smash, smash! Okay, whew! That was tight. That was really close. <laughs> if I put down my bouncing thing, it's gonna bounce. Where's it gonna bounce? I want to see where these go. Oh. It looks like they just hit each other. Yep. Oh. Let me guess. They're not discerning. Smashy smashy time. Yep. Hmm. How am I going to get it over the lip? Um. Well, shit. How? Just how? This looks so simple, but I don't get it. Um... Can I make it bounce? Whoa, how <laughs> somehow it bounced. Just by me placing this down. That actually might be exactly what I need. There we go. These monsters are destroying the city trying to get you. You shouldn't care about it, but you can't avoid it. Well, it is a dead city, but still. Seems disrespectful just to have them smash smash it about. A new device. It can send the electricity through the air. Hmm. Sort of wireless transmission, basically. Oh. Also, it hurts. New device. It can send the electricity through the air. Let's uh, let's get on it first. Yeah. That's better. Hmm. Well, I can imagine what to do here. That goes there, powers that, got it. That goes there, goes across, th oh, that's gonna kill me. Hmm. That is going to kill me. So I need to have it go down, and then just drop down afterwards, so I can't go on it. So do that. And then there we go. Oh, 
Okay, there's a mysterious crate that keeps spawning from the air. <laughs> Interesting. Shit, it broke both. Get out, get out, get out, get out! Oh. Wait a minute, what does this do? Oh, it moves this up here. Well, didn't time that right. Didn't time that right either. Also didn't time that right. I'm not even sure if this is what you're supposed to do, but I just want to see if I can push the box in midair. Oh my god. Mm. Is this even possible? Oh, too late, too early, too late. It's so fast. Mm. Okay, one more try, one more try. I don't think I'm supposed to do this. Okay, forget it. Oh, I see. That is going to stop it. No, you can't push it. I just died. You can't push it. It just went right through it. Okay. So yeah, that's simply a way to hold it. So can I burn this? Yes. So that could be a timer. Got it. But what good is that? This is a tough one. How much time do I have? One, two, three. I've got like one, two, three, four. Okay, I have about five seconds. What if I let it go, hit once, and then I push this? That, fuck. That was horrible. I could speed everything up. That's probably a good idea. Any, are any of my other colors gonna work? Sticky. That does nothing. Speeding it up might work. All right. Like, oh god. Okay, everything's on ice. This is chaos. Let's get rid of that. For now, and then put it back. And... Okay. Let that go, and then I'm just gonna push this like a madman. Yeah, I think this will actually work. That fuck. Ah! I think this will work. I just need to stop messing up. Need to wait for it to trigger. And then go. Ah! You know what? No, no, no. Hold on. I'm doing this wrong. All right, just, just break everything. Okay, this box needs... Ooh, can I put it here without it getting destroyed? No. All right, let's just do this. That actually worked. I did not exactly do that in the most efficient way, but it worked. That's all that matters. And I can't help but notice that I did not hit a checkpoint, so I think I need to be really careful here. That, what, is it gonna go to the closest transmission source or what? Let's see what happens. No. Oh, oh, it's going to where it's aiming, right? So this one's going to hit this one? I think... Is it? Yeah. 
Oh, and that's it. Okay, so I choose to that. So it's powered, so it sends. This thing is not powered, so it receives, and then it, or yeah, okay, I get it. Wait, where's the... Do I need... Oh, I need that as a power source, don't I? I do. Actually, we don't need that. Let's get, let's get rid of the gun part. Okay, I think I need to be on the other side for this. Right? That goes there, that goes there, that. Ooh. I could probably just raise it up halfway and then cut the connection. That's not halfway. Uh, there we go. Actually, a little bit more. Okay. This city will be destroyed, like the other places. You've done it before. And you will do it again. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not the one doing it? It's the Void. The Void is coming after me. Another device. This one looks really powerful. What the hell is that? It looks like it's a magnet thing, but it also could be a gigantic stapler gun, I suppose. Interesting. Look, I can finally... I can finally realize my dream of being a bird. Look at this. I'm flying around. Kaka, kaka, kaka. It really does look like a bird. Oh my god, get off me. Look at that. That is so cool. What if I stick myself? That's an interesting result. Okay. So it looks like a magnet, but it seems to be... It seems to attract anything to it, regardless of whether or not they would normally respond to a magnet, because these look like... These look like wooden boxes, and they sound like wooden boxes. What's that going to do? What the hell? Oh, that just allows me to get boxes over here. Okay. Hmm. I need to move it a little bit and then cut the connection. There we go. You are not like the ones that lived here before. They have destroyed this land, but they also created some incredible artifacts. You haven't created anything. Well, I mean, kind of. I've created smiley face color graffiti on everything. That's something. I almost stepped into that spike. Look at that. I'm so close to it. My toe is touching it. Okay, is this going... Oh. That's probably not going to affect the spikes, but it's going to affect me. So I need to raise myself up, and then I need to pull myself over? I think. What does that do? Yep, that didn't work. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm a bird, I'm a bird. Yeah. 
I always wanted to do this. Oh, wow, that's still pulling me in. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. That was a bad idea. How could I use this to my advantage? I don't even need to. I mean, I could just... I don't need to use this to try to kill it or subdue it. I could just kill it like this. And done. You can't stop thinking about this terrible truth. You add nothing to the world. You only bring destruction. Well, I am a void. So, again, you add nothing to the world is maybe literally speaking true. But I'm obviously something. I mean, I'm here. I'm walking. I'm jumping. That's interesting. When you go to the edge of this box, you get stuck in this weird... Like, hunched over... Sort of sneaky, sort of looking animation. And if you look at his feet, you can see he has these weird, like, ethereal little tendrils of void that almost look like feet. Like, it's like the tendrils are, uh, are pulling him along. It's actually really cool looking. I'm not sure why he's doing that, though. Oh, that's because this is a gigantic box here. I thought, this, I thought that was just part of the background. I'm walking into the wall. Duh. All right. Right, I've got to be on the other side of that. Oh, or I... Actually, can I burn it right now? Yes. Oh. Well. Whoa, where did I just go? That gave me quite the boost, and that gives me an idea. I can actually use that as a super jump, can't I? Let's try that again. Look at that. Boing. I can imagine some good uses for that. Ah, that doesn't work. What if I stuck myself? Would that keep me on the ground? It does! There we go. You have grown a lot. You have traveled and you have learned. But you will never deserve to be an inhabitant of this world. Because you are the cause of his destruction. I'm... I mean, if it weren't for me, the Void wouldn't have come after me, but still... It's not my fault. Looks like they're sleeps. So this should work. You try to think about something else, but it's impossible. Are you just a puppet from the void? Maybe I was intended as a puppet. Maybe I was going to be one of them. Just some mindless thing to be used to enact its will. But I'm obviously not anymore. I escaped. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Pulls it over there. And I'm doing my bird act again, which looks awesome. Hmm. 
Hmm. So I think I need to do that. Pull it over here and then stop. Oh, 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 I get it. I get it. Yeah, I need to pull it over here and have it um, have enough momentum to land down. And it's going to stop because of friction unless I put ice down. There we go. Cool. Fires the gun. Can I do this and still paint the surface? How much can I remove? Like, how thin can it be? Okay. So I can still put down some bounce, right? That seems to be kind of breaking it when I do that, but it's it's working. Really? I couldn't see myself, but of all the things that could have happened there. While I was off screen, I got hit. Oh, man. All right, well, this is easy. Oops. I do have a box. Can I do anything with the box? Eh, I mean, what I was doing before would have worked. I just need to avoid getting shot. Actually, I could just disable it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm staying up here. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Wait, how do I... How do I get this power anywhere? Oh, okay, there's enough room there. Cool. Well, this is bad. I didn't think it would get me from that far. I can stop that, though. Put down some of this. There we go. Mm, but how does that help? Let's get rid of that. Let's just burn it. Easy enough. It really does look like I'm a bird flying over here, doesn't it? Soon the city will be destroyed. You can't avoid it. Have you ever been able to choose? Well, I guess... I did make a choice when I was first born. I made a choice to leave. Oh, no, 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 uh, I keep forgetting about that. I need to stick myself to the ground. Okay, that's... interesting. Let's just move on. Oh, God. No, no, why? Why? Why did I come on unstuck? Let's try that again. Let's put down a thicker layer. Nice and thick, yes. There we go. Ooh, that's gonna hit me in the head, isn't it? Ugh. All right. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Now's my chance. It is staying put. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Okay. That was a bunch of power. How the hell does all this work? That uh, goes to there, goes to there. That powers this, which... Won't kill me, actually. Let's do that. Okay. I need to power the lift, which is powered... Ah, it's gotta go through the guns, which... Are they gonna hit me? Wait a minute, will the rounds be sucked up into me? Let's find out. Yep. There's the answer. So... I need to... Uh, um... Oh, I think I get it. Alright, stick myself. There we go, that protects me. Operate the lift. And that, I think, is all I need. There we go. It's a large patch of void here. here oh, here we go. Again. Oh, I just fell off. I wasn't even looking at the right of the screen. I was not even looking on the right here of the screen. Is. Again. I love the way you can just skate. Look at this. It looks so cool the way you're skating. Whee! We can go back and forth. Have to run. I know I do, but look at how cool this is. Look at the way it... Oh, it's just so satisfying looking and, and sounding. It's not your fault. You just want to live. Oh, this doesn't look good. What is this? What is this? Oh, I need to burn it. I need to burn it. Come on, 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 too late. One more time. It's not your fault. You just want to live. Do I need to bounce? I think I need to bounce. <laughs> that was a glancing blow if I've ever seen one. Good job. Wow. I'm so good. No, no, no. I still haven't gotten control of the hotkeys properly. Fear. Uh, what? A, oh god, what am I even doing? Holy shit, how am I supposed to do this? I don't even think I'm supposed to do that. I think I need to do that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Remorse. Wait, what the? Oh, whoa, Jesus Christ. Okay. That was close. Responsibility. Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, oh. I was so close. I got confused with all those things there. I'm not sure what was powering what. Fear. That powers that. This powers that. Good. Yeah, the connections are a little bit, uh, flaky. What the- oh, am I- 
Okay, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> I thought, where am I, where am I, where am I? And then I come shooting up to the spikes. Fear. Yes, fear, fear, I, I, I know. Remorse. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again, aren't I? Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. Responsibility. Oh, so close! I couldn't sever the connection fast enough. Fear. Remorse. Hit my head against that. Hit my head on the left again. That, nope. Nope. Or maybe I can Fear. stick myself or something. Maybe I can. There we go. Oh, no, no. Oh, fuck. It works, but... Um, not exactly how I wanted it to. Fear. No, not... Fire. Oh, that, wow. I think my original way might have been better. This is going to take about a million tries. Fear. Alright. Try hitting my head against the left, and again. Mm. Actually, I think I just thought of a better, better way to do that. Let me put my new plan into action. Remorse. Hold on. Do that. No, that. Hmm. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what the detection radius or uh, attraction radius on those things are. Holy shit, how many times am I going to have to do this? Remorse. Oh, whoa. Okay, that worked for some reason. Here we go, this is the one. I can feel it! I can feel it! Responsibility. Okay, there we go. Thank God. Fate. Now you understand. There's no world without Void. There's no light without darkness. And there's no life. Without death. Life is not a simple journey. Every action has consequences. You are not disposed to let the world perish. You are not going to run anymore. All this madness must come to an end. You walk into the infinite emptiness, ready to face your faith. But then, the void rejects you. It leaves you alone. You are complete. You are alive. The journey 
The colors, love, anger, happiness, sorrow, regret, and forgiveness. Everything you experienced has filled you. You are not empty anymore. The void is nothing, and it has nothing to claim from you. There's no void inside you. Now you can go. You deserve your own life. You are free at last. The end, as you can see. Void mode unlocked, what does that mean? A game by Beautifun Games, which is a wonderful name by the way, Beautifun, beautiful and fun. <laughs> it's silly, but it's a really nice name. Okay, well. Let me give my wrap up. I'm trying to understand what I'm looking at. It's an interesting way to give the programmer credits. There was some actual code there, integer. <laughs> huh. I'm actually going to wait for the credits to finish because they're probably very, very quick. And there might be something at the end of them, so let's just wait for a minute. We love you. Well, thank you. The Void will never chase you again. But you are not free. The world has been destroyed. And that will prevail in your conscience. Unless you fix it. Your duty now is to remove the void from the world. Then you will be really free. Is that what the void mode is? Is there more? Is this... No, so that, yeah, frozen cliff, so that's all the parts here. Desert, volcano, and the city. What is this? Is this the void mode? Hold on, let's go back. Oh, is something new in settings? What? What is that? I don't know what that is. Okay, well, finishing the game obviously unlocked new stuff. Um, there's an art gallery, and there's a void mode. What's in the art gallery? Let's go check it out for a minute before I give my wrap-up. <laughs> Baby born. Look at me so cute. Oh, wow, there's a lot here. I guess those are the kind of humanoid forms of him. Whoa. That's really pretty. Well, I'm not going to take a look at all of them. I will probably look at them on my own. Otherwise, I'll probably just spend like 20 minutes just going over the bonus features. 
Um, let's go take a look at the... The void mode. Let's go see what that is. I'm assuming that's the void mode. Wait, does that mean you can, like, play through the entire game again? What does it do? What does that do? Is it... Is it just like a super hard version, or what? Let's go back to the beginning, but in the void mode. Whoa. What the, what the, what the? <laughs> okay. This is not going so well. What the hell can I even do here? Hold on. I don't think I can burn it fast enough. I could slow it down. Okay, so this is some like insanely difficult version of the game, I think. Is it as long as the main game, but just super difficult? I don't know. Either way, though, I don't... I think there's kind of a game mode where I'm just... I guess I'm supposed to remove the void, and that's the true end, is after I've removed all the void. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want to. It seems like it might just be a super punishing game mode that's going to drive me nuts. I don't know. I'll, um... I'll read more about, more about and figure out exactly what it is. I don't... Like, does it really have a story to it, or is it just kind of like challenge maps or something like that, you know? I'm not sure, but I will figure that out. Let's return to the main menu. I'll figure that out, and I might do a video on it if it's something that I decide I want to play, but absolutely no promises, I don't know. Anyway, let me collect my thoughts, and then give my thoughts. Okay, I think I've collected my thoughts well enough. So let's dive into it, let's dive into what I think about the game, things I liked, things I didn't like, and all of that. Okay, so I really, uh, well, once again, just let me restate that. Platformers are not really my thing, although I think I'm getting into them a little bit more. With The Swapper. And now this. I'm actually starting to kind of like them. The thing is though, I don't like puzzle platformers for the puzzles or the platforming, really. That's why really the only puzzle platformers that I've played have been ones that have other elements that are very prominent. Like a lot of atmosphere and a lot of... just a lot of other stuff. Like this is a really dark game with a very moody and atmospheric world and story. You know, there's a very big story element to it. It's not, it's not all about the puzzles. And that's the same for the Swapper as well. So when it comes to, like, pure platforming games that are just all about the puzzles, I'm not really interested in that, but the ones that do have something else, that have a, a large focus on story, or atmosphere, or something really special like that, those ones I am interested in. And, well, this is one of them, obviously. Now, when it comes to what I actually enjoyed in it, because I don't care for the... I don't particularly care for the puzzle platforming elements, and that was no exception here, I... But the thing is, I surprisingly kind of enjoyed them. Like, they weren't what I liked most about this game. The, the platforming and solving the puzzles isn't what I liked the most about it, but I actually still enjoyed them. Which, just like the Swapper, surprised me. I actually enjoyed the puzzles in the Swapper, even though I didn't think I would. So even though I don't love that part of the game, I liked it, and I enjoyed it. And it didn't detract, or annoy me, and ruin the experience of the other stuff that I was more interested in personally, which is the story and the atmosphere and the art and all of that. So even though it's not exactly my type of game, it, once again, worked surprisingly well. So yeah, I think I'm really into uh, puzzle platformers, if they have some other elements to them, other than puzzles and platforming. Much to my surprise, my tastes are widening, I guess. Anyway, back on track. Despite the fact that this game isn't a particularly good fit for me in some ways, 
because of the, the general gameplay, there's a lot that's in it that I really, really like. So I really like the starting idea and the overall mood of the game, which is that you're this creature, this, this strange creature that can take many different forms from the void. You are a void. I just found that intriguing because what does that mean? You know, what, what is their world like? What is the void like? How do you leave the void? And how can you be made out of nothing? What does it even mean? It was just so dark and strange and intriguing. And I just love the overall mood of the piece. The way it's so... So sad. But also, it's, it's also hopeful though. But a lot of darkness, a lot of sadness, a lot of kind of existentialism, I guess you could say. About this, this creature searching for meaning. Trying to satisfy its curiosity, trying to avoid being eaten by the void again, you know, it just... He just wants to live. He just wants to experience life. I just thought that was really interesting. And I really liked it. I tend to like things that are towards the darker side and the stranger side. Things that are really moody and atmospheric. And this fit that perfectly. Everything from the art. I mean, just look at the background. And just the, the general color scheme of the game. It's Everything from the void has this purple and black look to it. It's just it's so cool looking. And then the art just in general is really good. Very good background art with very little exception to that. There, there was like the occasional little bit that looked a little bit less than uh, amazing. But most of the game just looked really, really good. Especially big props to the character animations. For everything from your main character to all of the enemies and all of those things. They looked wonderful. So, just so fluid. And once again, look at him. Look at him right there. Look at how fluid all of that is. All of his billowing bits of imitation material. When you try to imitate the scarecrow thing. It's so fluid. It's got a wonderful sense of movement. Yeah, I, I know I've seen a lot of platformers that especially ones with low budgets that, you know, they don't have a lot of money to put into the art, to the art. Um and you'll see that often the characters don't they don't really feel like they're moving all that much. You see them move around and it's just kind of like a fairly static kind of like blob that's jumping up and down and stuff like that. But you know, if you have a low art budget, well, what are you going to do? But this is like the absolute polar opposite of that. It's about as fluid as you can get. Every movement just billows out and feels satisfying. Just jumping up and down and hopping up and down was fun in this game just because of how it looked and how it felt. It was really wonderful. So the overall kind of dark and sad, but slightly hopeful mood of the game is something I really liked, and I loved the art. The music is also great. Really good music. I like the I like the fact that the story has both a literal, uh, an obvious literal interpretation. I mean, you, you saw what happened in the story. Um, but it also has it also has a metaphorical interpretation and I'm someone who likes the literal interpretation of a story more I don't tend to like to care all that much about or I don't I do care about interpretations of stories but I don't tend to latch on to them I find it hard to really go with an interpretation of a story where it's you know left open to interpretation I can't really go with an interpretation and say yes that's what happened I don't feel comfortable doing that because it's so up in the air you just have no idea it's too fluid. So I don't feel comfortable saying, yes, that happened, or that's what I'm going with. But, despite that, I do like it when there is also, in addition to the literal story, there's a metaphorical layer that is just, it's there. You know, you can think of it, and do with it what you will, and interpret it how you want. But you don't have to. I really like that, and this game has that. It has a clear metaphorical interpretation about experiencing uh, life and ab absorbing all that life has to offer, you know, collecting the colors, love and happiness and anger and experiencing life and going from something that is the void, something that is nothing, something that is a shell, and filling it with life, basically. 
I think that's really cool that there's that, that there's that other layer to the story. Let's see, what else is there to mention? Oh yeah, okay, let's go into a couple of things um, I didn't like, which there really isn't all that much, actually. The vast majority of the game I really enjoyed. But there's a couple little things. So one is, as I mentioned in the beginning, the narrator. I don't understand how, from what perspective the narrator is supposed to be coming from. Sometimes it seems like it's talking for the void and wants you to fail. Other times it seems like it's helping you. Other times it seems like it's talking from your perspective. And even other times it feels like it's some sort of omniscient book narrator that knows exactly what is going to happen in the story. I never knew how to took it, and it was. I never knew how to take it, and it was always awkward. I didn't really get it. It never clicked. It just felt very strange. And the the writing, um, the writing for the narrator is also a little bit. I don't know. It was just okay. Like I didn't. I didn't think the writing was particularly strong. It felt kind of cheesy and silly and strange at times. I think there's only one other thing. But yeah, I mean, that, and that's a pretty minor thing. It's not that big of a deal. That, that didn't ruin my enjoyment of the game by any means. Um, oh yeah, one other thing that I think could be improved is... Well, here's the thing about puzzle platformers. They usually have ridiculous contraptions and stuff so that they have things to use for puzzles. I mean, pick practically any pl puzzle platformer. You have things that smash you, blades that cut you, lasers, rockets, stuff that shoots at you, pools of lava, you know. You need, you need a toolbox of stuff to use for making puzzles. That makes sense. And when you have a typical puzzle platformer, which, the typical puzzle platformer is all about puzzles and platforming. It, it doesn't really have a strong story. It's not really about that. It's about the puzzles. You know, it's all about the gameplay. Um, and in that case, you can really throw whatever the hell you want. Just throw it at the wall. Anything will stick, really. You could have the most ridiculous contraptions. And it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really hurt the your immersion in the story because the story is either not really there or it just doesn't even matter. In those cases, it's fine. However, for a game like this, and a game like The Swapper, where there is a very strong focus on the story of the game, and the mood and the atmosphere, immersion becomes important. And so, what things you use to make puzzles, your building blocks to make puzzles, need to make sense. It's important that they do, so that it doesn't break your immersion. You can't have ridiculous puzzles and expect someone to still stay immersed in your game. Because this is, this is a serious game, you know? This isn't a happy-go-lucky, feel-good game. It's pretty dark and serious. So when you have something like that, your puzzles need to not feel really silly. And they often did. And surprisingly, I didn't mind all that much, but it definitely took me out of it when I'm... You know, we're talking about some creature and it's... Uh, it, this creature and it's, its search for life and trying to escape the void. And it just looks so sad, and it's, you know, shivering from the cold, and I feel bad for it. And then the next thing I encounter is something like some gigantic, huge piston that is meant to mash my face in inside of a cave. Like, why is there a giant piston in a cave? The reason is because it's for a puzzle, obviously. It's to make a puzzle. But within the story, you know, within the universe, it doesn't really make any sense. It's really silly. So when you have a serious game with a large focus on story, I think you really need to push back on the, the silly stuff, the, the silly elements of having a puzzle platformer. Which is difficult. I imagine that would be difficult. I don't know, I don't know that much about puzzle platformers, but... I think it'd be hard to keep a serious game with seriously constructed puzzles that don't hurt the believability of the world. I think that'd be damn difficult. And the puzzles weren't completely absurd or anything like that. You know, they didn't, like, totally ruin my immersion. It wasn't that big of a deal. 
but I did notice it. I, I did take note of it, and it did take me out of the game a little bit. But that kind of segues into another thing I did like about the game. The puzzles. Now, I think basically every puzzle game I have ever played, I've gotten stuck. At some point or another. In the Swapper, I got stuck all the time, but that was because the game is just really hard. Um, in some games, I get stuck because the game is, well, some, some puzzles are just poorly designed. So the reason for getting stuck differs. Sometimes it's because of difficulty, sometimes it's because of poor design. Uh, but in this case, I didn't get stuck at all, really. Which surprised the hell out of me, because I'm not particularly skilled in puzzles. I haven't played that many puzzle games. I don't particularly like games that focus on puzzles in general. So it surprised me that I never really got stuck, but I, I didn't. The puzzles were actually pretty damn... they were really well designed. You know, they made sense. I was never beating my head against a wall. It felt like a good ramping up of difficulty and building elements on each other and just building and building and building. I think, if anything, the puzzles actually might be too easy. I don't know. I, they, I guess I'd have to hear about how some, about how some other people felt the difficulty of the puzzles were. How they felt about it. I don't know if I just got really lucky and maybe things just thankfully clicked for me, or what, but I, I feel like maybe the difficulty of the game is in general pretty low. Because, again, most puzzle games I get stuck in. And this one I didn't, which, if I don't get stuck in a puzzle game, then that means it's, it's probably pretty easy. Because <laughs> I always get stuck. But that surprised me, and I found it um, surprisingly fun to solve the puzzles. They were pretty quick, pretty satisfying, pretty straightforward. They tantalized my brain and stressed it enough that I had to actually think, but they didn't completely break my brain and make me want to punch a wall or something. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. I also like a lot of the little touches in the environments. And just little touches everywhere, like the fact that when you're in a cold environment, you can see your creature, your... It sounds weird to call him a creature because he's so adorable and sad, <laughs> but I don't know what else to call him. I guess, well, Born is his name, although I don't think anyone ever really referred to him as Born for some reason, but I'll just call him Born. The way Born, when you're in a cold environment, is uh, shivering and sneezing, and when you're in a hot environment, he's sweating. That was a nice little touch, and also the fact that when you're in a hot environment, you can see the background art is shimmering because of the heat. And I just like the great variety of environments you got to go to. I really like that. You start out from cold to getting warmer, you know, more life, and then you ended up at a volcano, <laughs> which is from one extreme to another. It's a really nice variety of environments that all had their own interesting and unique elements to them. Like the frozen part, you had blizzards uh, pushing at you. And then in the desert, you had like a sandstorm, which is kind of the same thing, but then there's tons of new enemies and all of that. And then in the volcano section, you had the lava that kept rising up and all of that. And you had the the elements uh, in the lava sections where you had to like uh, annoy the fireflies to make light. So you had some sections where light was important. They just kept changing things up, you know, interesting environments, new interesting enemies to work with. I just like the variety. The variety was really fun. That was one of the things I liked most about it, is just going around and experiencing more of this wonderful art and wonderful environments. So yeah, overall, I guess the things that I would want to see improved would be the voiceover being a bit awkward, the writing being a little bit weak for the voiceover, and the puzzles being a little bit immersion-breaking. And the good is, well, basically everything else. Wonderful art. Wonderful environmental design and all of that. The character animations are great. I love the graphic design. I love the mood of it. I love the music. The variety of environments. The puzzles were really well designed and satisfying to solve. Although maybe a little bit too easy. It's hard to tell. It's really hard for me to judge puzzle difficulty because, you know, everyone's different. But I suspect it was on the easier side. And I think that's about it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was damn good. 
You know, it just, it strikes me that I have no idea what Beautifun Games has made. Is this their first game or have they made something before? I don't know, I'm gonna have to research them and see what else, see what else they've done and certainly keep an eye out on anything they do in the future. All right, I think that about wraps it up. I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of Nihilumbra.